All right, yo, what is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Mr. DDG, and i back with another reaction video. Today, we finna react to <laughs> horror movie characters I can beat. Uh, three. Hmm. This should be interesting. Happy spooky season to you all. Hope y'all go to church. Out here celebrating the devil's holiday. I hope y'all go to church this Sunday. Get yourself back right with the Lord, because ain't no way. But anyways, though, without further ado, man, let's get right into this. What's in the basket? <laughs> Yo, it's spooky season. Halloween's right around the corner. So we back at it again with more horror movie characters that I know can't stand a foot against me. Because of my strength and intelligence. No one likes a long opening ceremony. So let's waste no time and get right into round one. You're done. Enjoy You're done. Terrifier from the movie Terrifier is about Terrifier, Terrifying, and murking random people. One Mexican down. I know his name is Art the Clown, but Terrifier is more fun to say. Now, when looking at him, he looks like your ordinary killer clown. And he is, but the difference between him and the rest is that he's brutal. He will deal with his victims in the messiest, most grotesque way possible. I don't even think I can show you any of the ways of how he do it, because this YouTube. But he saws a woman in half from her poon poon to her head in front of her BFF. This dude crazy. However, I don't think he's all that terrifying based on my observations of him. In the first movie, when we get introduced to him, we as the audience can subtly tell that there's something different about this guy from everybody else. I don't know if you can notice, but this man's teeth is terrible. It looked like he never picked up a toothbrush a day in his life. You can tell he at least got gingivitis or mouth cancer, so that'll lower his stats in a fight against me. He technically fighting two battles at once. He also gets bitched by the pizza shop owner for being weird and creepy. Now, this would have been an amazing moment to jump on. Even though at this point in the movie, he hasn't killed anyone yet, him having a staring problem at the shop alongside his whole demeanor, I'ma assume he's trying to start something, and we fighting that. And since everyone else in the shop hate him too, they're joining in with me. Cause the way he do these murders, he strikes me as someone you can win against if you can sneak him or come in numbers when he don't got a gun. Now I know he technically a demon since he gets revived at the end of the first and second movie, but he got no other demon powers. Plus his revives takes at least two to three business days to do. So I'll have time for seconds. I just gotta be on my toes. This is low to mid diff at best. Who made that mess? Long Legs is about an FBI agent who gets assigned to a case of a string of murders and each one leaves a note signed by Long Legs this guy however what's weird about these murders is other than the letters left at the scene there's no physical evidence that this guy is the killer even though he definitely is like look at him he got to be guilty of something the reason for the lack of evidence is because there's two more accomplices to the murders the main character's mom and satan the devil himself they've been creating dolls of their victims giving it to them and having the devil do the rest so this is a powerful force i'm dealing with how am I supposed to beat these guys when they have the literal devil on their side? Well, joke's on them, cause I deal with the devil every day. Through my struggles, temptations, anger, and almost half the time I end up winning because I have God on my side. And in a fight against these devil worshiping demons, I believe he will give me the strength of a thousand young niggas to punish these sinners to death in a life or death boxing match so yes i could confidently say on oh god i'm beating the devil alongside his ugly ass disciples too no death i have the holy ghost with me a quiet place takes place in a world where monsters called death angels just popped up in new york and started killing people Although these things are blind, you can't make any sound or noise because these things will find you. So you gotta stay quiet. This is gonna be more of a how I survive than me beating them. Cause what I look like trying to fight this, I'm not Epo. First, I'm gonna travel solo or with my direct family. I'm not traveling with no other groups, none of that. Especially if they got a kid with them. Second, no kids, all of them gotta go. Cause they'll be the first ones to get us killed. Most of them be crying over the smallest things. Plus they won't be able to run from these monsters with their little legs. They are free meal for these things. And I'm not trying to be the appetizer. And I'm only talking little, little kids. If your kid is old enough to know when to shut the hell up, they're cool. But if they aren't, I'm sorry to tell you, but 
I highly recommend you to abandon your children. They'll yep. only hold you back just like in real life. Who knows? They might be able to survive on their own, maybe, probably. Eh, 5% chance. But th that's not nothing. So only family, no... Yep. <laughs> yep, I agree with that. All kids must die. Y'all the first ones go. You want to... They the sacrificial lambs. Yep. They, they want to eat some. let them eat the kids. I'm surviving. Fuck that. Fuck them kids. Fuck the kids. Fuck them kids. No kids in a lifetime supply of moon pies. Gotta stay fed somehow. In fact, we probably don't even gotta do all that. Cause spoilers, their weakness is high pitch frequencies. So you can basically go to PetSmart and buy a dog whistle and have them beat. These guys aren't even much of a threat. They're like a little puppy that can rip you in half. When looking at them like that, they don't seem too scary no more, do they? Meaning they ain't gonna be a challenge for me. 10 out of 10, I'm surviving a quiet place. Wow, scream. I need you to. Shake that booty, I'm blocking you, brother. Unfreaded is a movie taking place in a Skype call. A group of friends are chatting, then the ghost of their friend that self-destructed exactly a year earlier joins the call and starts murking them one by one. Until one of them confesses about recording and posting an embarrassing video of her, which ended up being her 13th reason. And the ghost power level is pretty strong. It can physically break into their house and it's shown powers of mind control. So she ain't like some of those other ghosts that exist just to haunt you and be spooky this ghost means business but y'all know me no person ghost or demon gonna catch me lacking i know i can beat this ghost the only reason these guys had a hard time with it is because these group of friends are dumber than a sack of potatoes although they do try calling the police once and attempt to track the ghost down as if it ain't a ghost they don't do nothing else to fight against this ghost they just play along with its death games and i'm just wondering why none of these guys are leaving granted the ghost said if anyone leaves the call they die but they can leave the house without the ghost knowing while staying in call at the same time everybody's screaming and distracted on there laura ain't gonna notice by the way that's the name of the ghost and even if she were we don't know that because they don't even try it or even better secretly text everyone in the chat to turn off their wi-fi at the same time so they all leave the skype call at once because with this they technically did not leave the call they got kicked out so it doesn't count and even if it do it can't go after all of us it's one ghost only one of y'all gotta die not me though or we could do the best option which is to confess your sins because spoilers the main girl in the movie was the one that filmed laura's 13th reason and posted it and earlier in the film when she was researching how to stop ghosts from killing you and your friends on facetime the website said admitting guilt is the only way out so all she had to do was say yo about the video and the bullying and me being the reason you shot yourself my bad, like, I didn't even know you were gonna do all that for real. She could have just done that, but instead, she blames her friends when the ghost asks who did it, getting them killed, with her still dying because the ghost knew she lying the whole time. Unbelievable. All of this bloodshed was completely avoidable. I've listed a few good options to beat this ghost and save your friends' lives at the same time. But you know what this girl does at the end of the movie instead? She goes on chat roulette, begging people to call the police for her. Now, if this is not the dumbest option, I don't know what is. Tell me, would you go on a mago, talking to niggas from Timbuktu, begging them, please call the cops, a ghost is killing us on FaceTime? Like. Why would that idea even cross your mind? These guys are so dumb in the movie. There's no saving them, but they're saving me. I am not dying in this situation, even if these were my group of friends, cause I'ma be in that call confessing and snitching like I just received a happy meal at interrogation. I'm all for ride or die, but dying is always the last option for me. And if I don't have to, I ain't going to. This is a low diff ghost problem. I'm surviving. Godzilla needs no introduction because everyone will know them when their big ass shows up. Some might say they aren't a horror movie character, but I know the Japanese would hate to see this nigga coming, so I'm counting them. Not only do they stand at more than 350 feet, but some of its powers include nuclear breath, nuclear shockwaves, laser beams, telepathy, regeneration, flight, and fight this thing's stats are all maxed i'm surprised anybody stood a chance at even damaging this beast many people would assume the task of beating godzilla is an impossible mission but you know what 
they said the same thing to Tom Cruise about his missions. And that guy has like 30 movies proving us wrong. So do I have a plan against Godzilla? Of course I do. Listen and learn. Now, fighting, military weapons, and nukes won't work on it. But you know what would? An Ava. We build a motherfucking Ava suit to beat Godzilla. These things are not only strong, they're crazy fast, or at least fast enough to dodge his lasers and hot ass breath. Plus, we've seen how crazy the Ava can be when it goes berserk. Against Godzilla, it might have a chance. Now you might ask, how the hell am I gonna get access to an Ava? And I'm telling you, if Godzilla pulled up to Myrtle Beach one day wreaking havoc, they won't have time to think about military strategy or how unqualified I am for this task. It won't matter because they will see my confidence. And when me and whoever the president will be next week meet eyes, they will immediately be like, someone please get this man a suit and all of our tax money. Ava suit secured. Now all we need is someone's mom to sacrifice and merge her soul to the Ava. I vote Beyonce. I believe her soul is stronger than a thousand suns. Beyonce! With all those requirements put together, I believe I have a pretty strong chance against Godzilla. And if the government so happens to deny my request, then we're all fucked. I'm not gonna hype myself up too much, so I would say I have like a six, maybe seven out of 10 chance of beating Godzilla, you know? But it has to be in the suit. With no Ava suit? Pray. And there you have it, a few more horror movie characters I could beat in a match of fisticuffs. So many of them I could beat, my record would look like Floyd Mayweather's if this was real. And if you don't think I can beat serial killers, ghosts, or demons, then you're a whole different type of delusional, buddy. You don't know what I'm capable of? I don't need to prove nothing. That's all I gotta say. And in conclusion, this album is so good. Wow. All righty, that's just going to about do it for this one. Let's be real. He ain't be none of these people. Yeah. Without further ado, man, I will see you all in the next video. Till then, peace out.